What's up guys? So both the Tacoma and the 4Runner are due for oil changes right now and so I figured I'm going to do a separate video for each one just to show you guys how I do it, what I use, kind of my theory behind the whole conventional versus synthetic thing. Uh, so today we're going to start with the taco here. In my opinion, the oil change on these 4 liter V6s on these Toyota trucks is about as easy as it gets. Uh, these older second gen Tacomas Nice and simple. Uh, the newer trucks, they've got the stupid like cartridge oil filter, uh, skate plates to get out of the way and stuff like that. These are super simple. You got your drain plug on the bottom, you got your oil filter up top here, easy to get at, fill it up when you're done. Really straightforward. So what do you need to change the oil in your Tacoma? Uh, tools and equipment. First of all, we got oil here. We got 5W30, this is just conventional oil. Um, this is what it calls for. If you're wondering, you can always check your oil cap on these things. And it'll tell you right there what oil you're supposed to be running. 5W30. So we got that and typically I like to use Toyota filters. Um, I just trust them. They're a little bit bigger. But in this case, this one's for the 4Runner. We're not doing that one today. I didn't have time to go to the dealership to get another one. So I just went to Canadian Tire. This is a, a MotoMaster one. This is the MPH3614. It's out of focus. There we go. For the drain plug, we've got a ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket on it, got an extension on there. Um, we're going to need, a, obviously, a drain pan to put all of our old oil in. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can get an oil filter wrench if you think you need one. If you if you got kind of a weak grip, then you might want to do that if you're not the last one to put one on. In my case, I always just put them on just barely tight enough, so I never have any problems getting them off. But if you're concerned about that, you might want to use an oil filter wrench. Aside from that, uh, just a funnel maybe to fill it up if you want to be precise and there's not a whole lot needed to do this job Another thing worth mentioning is these ramps that I have it on as well It makes life a little bit easier for getting underneath not absolutely required though in this case I'm just doing it because I want to have room to be able to video under here I want to be able to move the camera around and get you guys decent camera angles So that's my main reason for using the ramps right now um, at stock height and especially with these tires these taller tires there's no problem with just crawling underneath the truck and being able to reach what you need to reach. Okay, so now for my first public service announcement, or my, my first little warning here. This is your drain bolt for your engine oil. And you'll notice this is up front here, beside the tires, like in between. You see your front differential right here. We're up towards the front of the vehicle, and this is the bottom of the oil pan. This is your 14 millimeter bolt for your drain plug. Do not drain that guy back there. That's your transmission. Uh, you know, you'll see that in terms of where it's at. It's surrounded by the exhaust pipes. Um, you have the drive shaft back there. There's another cross member. You do not want to pull that drain plug unless you're working on the transmission because what's going to happen is you're going to empty out your transmission and not realize it and double fill your engine oil and potentially blow both of them up. All right, so we're going to start by draining our oil first, obviously, and you want to make sure you got a, a rag handy nearby because this could get messy. And we've also got our drain pan underneath here. So we're just going to crack this loose with our 14 mil socket. And also a good idea, wear your rubber gloves because this, this can be messy. There's just kind of no way around it. There we go. So now we're just going to let it drain for a little while until it's, it's all done peeing. It's also a good idea to uh, pop the oil cap off while it's draining. It just helps it to drain a little bit faster. Uh, kind of think of the, the relief cut on like the apple juice can. While that oil is draining, I always like to clean up the, the drain plug. Uh, you can wipe it down with brake clean or something if you want to. If you're, It's all a matter of uh, how detail oriented you are and, and how crazy you want to be. Uh, I just kind of wipe it down to get the crud off of it. And this is when you're going to want to swap out your crush washer on here as well, if you'd like to do that. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and plug this back in, and then we'll do the filter. Okay, once you get to the point where the oil is just slowly dripping from here, you're close enough that you can, you can button it back up. Uh, now keep in mind, it's worth mentioning that I do have this thing up on ramps right now, so it's not sitting perfectly level. There's a little bit of a chance that some of the oil could be pooling in the back of the pan here. Uh, I'm not super concerned about it because the amount that would be stuck in there compared to the five liters of brand new stuff I'm putting in is, is pretty small, but uh, it's something to consider if you care about that, that you might want to make sure you're on flat ground when you do this to make sure you drain it all out. But anyways, we've got our 
crush washer on here and we're gonna go ahead and just tighten this back up by hand. And you wanna make sure not to cross thread this too. You gotta be extra careful. And we'll go ahead with our 14 mil, crank it tight. Now, I'm sure there's a legit torque spec for this, but for me, I just kind of do it by feel. You know, it's uh, kind of common sense. You don't want to over tighten it to the point of ripping the threads out of it or something, and you don't want to leave it loose enough that you're going to lose all your oil on the highway, obviously, but uh, to me, good and tight is uh, a good enough torque spec for this. Then you're just going to come in and you want to make sure to wipe off any uh, excess oil that's dripping down here. If you want to, you could hit this with some brake cleaner or something and uh, really clean it up. For me, a little bit of oil underneath the rusty Toyota is not the end of the world. Okay, we're moving on to the oil filter now. And as you can see, this is super easy to get at. It's right on the top of the engine. This is how I like to do oil changes. <laughs> Unlike this car right here, just a little side note, the oil filter is still on the top, but it's right beside the turbocharger, uh, right up against the firewall. So it bakes on, it's brutal anyways. This is quick and easy to get at. You can just reach right in and grab it. And there's a pretty cool thing here. As you can see, there's a, like a little cup kind of surrounding the oil filter. And that is for if you've been running the engine and there's oil pushed up into the filter here from the oil pressure, obviously, then when you loosen this off, it's gonna wanna drain straight down and make a mess with oil everywhere. So Toyota actually puts a little cup around this. And this is designed to catch the oil that falls out of the filter. And there's a little nub on the underside down here. Um, this actually had a little rubber cap on it. I'm not sure if they come like this or if this was a previous owner popped this on there. Uh, so I'm not sure if your truck is gonna have that or not. But the idea is, I think the official word is you're supposed to run like a, a rubber hose down to the drain pan. I'm not gonna bother doing that. Um, my fellow family man can appreciate this. This is a bottle of baby formula. <laughs> I'm gonna pop the cap. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold this underneath uh, on that little nub and any oil that comes out of the filter is gonna go into this cup and then drain into this bottle, nice and tidy. And I can just cap this and throw this away with everything else. All right, so I probably should have checked this first, but the little drain hole that goes to the nub was plugged on this one. So this pulled up with oil and then it just sat there and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, now I gotta get that out. So I ended up just using a little kind of like a dentist pick here, one of these little skinny guys, and just poked it through to, I think it was just a little bit of dirt or something in there. Just poked it through to free it up and then uh, we ended up filling this guy up. There's only a little bit in here. I mean, it's like maybe, I don't know, a quarter full. Uh, but anyways, we got our, leftover filter oil in this guy. We can cap this now, nice and clean. And we've got no spills, no messes down there. Okay, onto the Motomaster oil filter here. And here's proof that I normally do run Toyota filters, like I say, <laughs> this is the old one. Uh, and you can see the difference. They're a little bit smaller. I don't think it's enough to make a real difference, but it is a little bit smaller than the Toyota one. Um, another interesting difference too is these ones are a little bit old school. Um, you still have to oil the, the seal on these. And I find that the Toyota ones actually come in the box with a little bit of oil on the, the O-ring already. So um, not a problem, but it's just a, a difference between the two. All right, I got it all oiled up. You can see just a real thin layer of whatever the old oil is that you got kicking around. You just don't want it to be dry rubber on there. So we can go ahead and pop this into place now. And as with the drain plug, you want to make sure you're not cross-threading this. This should be able to go on just with your fingertips like this. Now, in terms of how tight to make this, typically I was always taught, like in my high school auto class and stuff, you want to spin it until the seal comes into contact and then just like another quarter turn. So about maybe like that. And you don't want to over tighten these because you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Your next oil change, you're going to be struggling to get this off. Um, and again, you don't want it too loose that this thing is just going to spin off and, and be a problem. But that's what I was always taught was spin it down to the point where it makes contact here. And then like another quarter, maybe a half a turn. And that's enough. So it, you can actually still move it a little bit. And that's considered tight enough. So there you have it. That's uh, how I put an oil filter on. All right, now it's time to fill it up with some fresh oil. And again, I'm using 5W30. This is just Pennzoil stuff. Uh, conventional oil, I mean, it, of course it's synthetic blend, but this isn't like the full 100% synthetic stuff. 
And my theory behind that is I just change it often. If I've always got clean oil in here, I don't need to worry about running an oil that's super expensive, that's designed to last for 10,000 kilometers or whatever, if I'm changing it every four or 5,000 kilometers. I know that there's a, a lot of differing opinions about this, and maybe I'm in the minority, but I just feel like as long as this engine has clean oil in it of some sort, then it's healthy. I don't like the idea of waiting for 10,000 kilometers just to change my oil. I, I feel like, I know like the newer Toyotas, they're all designed to do that, but I don't know. I just don't feel good about it. I like to just keep it fresh and change it every 5,000. And that just makes sense to me. So you can do whatever you want, but that's just what I choose for my trucks. All right, now it's just a matter of uh, popping our cap back on here. And we have fresh oil, fresh filter on our Tacoma. One other thing I like to do sometimes, just to keep an eye on things, is I'll put an inspection light in my oil here. And I just want to see that there isn't any like major metal shavings or anything in here. I don't know, it just kind of gives me peace of mind seeing that it's nice and clear. So I typically just put the full five liter jug in and call it good. Um, that's what these Tacomas, that's what they call for five liters, five quarts, whatever you want to call it. Um, in my experience with doing this, when I just do the full five liter jug and then I check it after, it always ends up being pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. But I am going to show you how to check your oil level. And first things first, we need to get this guy back on flat ground if we want to get an accurate reading. Once we're on flat ground, we're going to pull, this is our dipstick right here, by the way. This is where we're going to check our level. Um, now these Tacomas are known for having like difficult to read dipsticks. I don't know what it is, something about the drainage in the tube or something. And what some people recommend with these Tacomas is start the engine up for a few seconds, let it run through the, the whole engine, the crankcase and everything, pull the dipstick and then let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes. And that's gonna let the oil level drop back down in the dipstick tube. Um, and that'll give you a more accurate reading. And also, if you're having trouble with, like you think your dipstick is just too slippery, that the oil just isn't sticking to it in time for you to be able to actually take a look at what's on there. Um, another trick is you can kind of just scuff it up with a little bit of sandpaper just to rough it up a little. And sometimes that'll help the oil cling to it a little bit better. So between those two tips, you should be able to get an accurate reading from the dipstick on your Tacoma. Okay, so I did just what I said there. I pulled the dipstick and let it sit for about 15 minutes. And now, hopefully you can see on camera here, we are almost right at the F. This isn't gonna to wanna to focus for me. Here we go, close enough. So that's an accurate reading. That makes sense that that adds up to putting five liters directly in this thing. So uh, I think we're good to go. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about changing the oil on your Tacoma or your V6 4Runner. Uh, keep in mind, this is also a, a good time to do things like checking your air filter, grease up all your joints, any of the Zerk fittings that you can find on your drive shaft and stuff like that. Um, and a good idea to rotate your tires too. And on that note, we're going to have another video coming up soon all about rotating your tires. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next one.